appreciate the horror of those centuries of enslavement. Some of us would have seen the movie 12 Years a Slave. That movie brings out in a very graphic way that the slave plantation was a concentration camp. So I'm, uh, we believe that the 12th of October, the day on which Columbus landed in our hemisphere, and, and a day from which modern slavery, modern racism um, took its genesis, that perhaps that day could be recognized as an international reparations day, a day on which all of us focus on the horrors of the Mafia and the need to transcend those horrors through a reparatory justice process. So one of our comrades from Barbados has actually sent a resolution that I will give to the, the head table uh, proposing that this conference agree to adopt the 12th of October as International Reparations Day. All right, so that's one. The second point that I'd like to put on the table is this. Uh, I, I deliberately didn't mention that I'm a member of the Barbados Government's Task Force on Reparations because our, um, our mandate has actually come to an end. We were appointed for two years and they've just come to an end, so we will see what will happen. But I understand that the Trinidad Task Force has taken the position that the political opposition should be represented on the task force. And I want to endorse that. I think that is a very wise position to take. And I am hoping that the Barbados government will move in that direction when the new task force is appointed. But I think it's important for this, for this reason. One of the things we need to do is to enact in our national parliaments resolutions confirming as a part of our national law that slavery was a crime against humanity and acknowledging the re legal requirement to make reparation. It is important that this become part of the national law of all CARICOM nations because one of the sources of international law is principles of law recognized by national states. So if we are going to be making a case for reparations, uh, one of the building blocks of that case is national laws confirming the, 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 the legal legitimacy of, of the case. And if that is going to happen, it means you're going to have to have parliamentary debates. And you don't want the political opposition on the outside sniping. So it would make sense to bring them fully into the process by making them, giving them representation on the national committees or task force. So that's the third thing. So that's the second thing. The, the, the final thing is this. I, uh, I can speak to this because I came into this process in, in a very central way with the United Nations World Conference Against Racism. And the resolutions that we passed at Durban pointing the way to reparations. And so I believe that the diplomatic strategy is a very important strategy to be pursued. And I know it is a very efficient strategy because during that Durban process, not just the Durban conference, but all the preparatory conferences leading up to Durban, we were able to mobilize a very strong pro-reparations lobby at the United Nations. We were able to isolate the United States, the European Union, Australia, basically the white um, countries, and we were able to be very effective in getting pro-reparation resolutions passed at Durban. So I know that we can be effective in that forum. Now, 
one of the things I think we need to do is to, like Cuba, we need to follow the Cuban example. Every year, <laughs> Cuba brings a resolution before the General Assembly of the United Nations denouncing the embargo. And Cuba has been very effective in using that annual resolution not only to accumulate allies, they've been so effective over the years that now 180-something countries routinely vote for the resolution with two or three against the United States and one or two others. We should do a similar thing with uh, an annual reparations resolution in the General Assembly. And what Cuba also has done with that annual resolution is that uh, progressively they have compiled the evidence of the damage done by the embargo. In other words, it is not a simple matter to, to compile the evidence at one go, but it can be done in a progressive process over a period of time. So I'm saying let us, let us be encouraged by what we were able to do at Durban, and let us be encouraged by the Cuban example with the anti-embargo resolution and let us carry on that is, let us adopt a similar process at the General Assembly of the United Nations. I want to put those three things on the table. Very well.